Valve's first attempt at making a portable gaming device is nearly here. The Linux-powered Steam Deck can be reductively summarized as a Nintendo Switch for PC gaming. It's a way to take your entire PC games library with you on the go, and it's a dramatically different proposition to anything Valve has produced before. Ahead of its initial launch in late February 2022, we're taking a look at everything revealed about the system so far. The Steam Deck is a portable handheld PC that will ship with Valve's own Steam OS built on top of Linux. The device is built as an entirely open platform, letting players install games outside of the Steam ecosystem, run additional PC software alongside them, or just replace the entire OS with Windows if they'd like. Valve is hoping that most, if not all, games will work just fine on Steam OS when the Steam Deck launches, with a lot of work going into improving Proton, a compatibility layer that allows Windows games to run on Linux without native support and without too many issues. The handheld looks like a beefier Nintendo Switch with two analog sticks and two arrays of face buttons on each side. Below the thumbsticks are two capacitive touchpads that can also be used for directional input, like the two touchpads used on Valve's discontinued Steam controller. The screen is a 1200 by 800 7 inch display, which should be great for running games below 1080p while maintaining crisp image quality. The Steam Deck features a USB-C port on the bottom for charging, with Valve estimating that the device will last between 7 and 8 hours on a single charge, depending on the game you're playing. The Steam Deck can also be docked and connected to an external display for higher resolution gaming, but the internals are very much designed for lower resolution play. 4K output is at least supported, but don't expect games to run at that resolution. Internal storage is dependent on which version of the Steam Deck you have ordered, but every model also supports expansion via microSD cards. The device comes with SteamOS and Steam pre-installed with support for all of Steam's features such as cloud saves, messages, and more. Alternative game launchers such as the Epic Game Store or Battle.net can also be installed, either on the standard Linux operating system or whichever you choose to overwrite it with. The Steam Deck comes in three versions, each of which feature the same internals, just differing sizes and speeds of storage. The cheapest model only has the eMMC storage as opposed to the NVMe storage found in the two more expensive models, which you should take into consideration giving the potentially dramatic difference in speeds. You can at least expand the storage on each model using the micro SD card slot with storage of varying speeds. And according to early reports, micro SD cards may actually provide comparable load times to the internal SSD. And although Valve says it's technically possible, the company doesn't suggest opening the Steam Deck and replacing the stock internal storage, given how the part was designed for the least electromagnetic interference possible with the rest of the components. As for the rest of the specifications, that's where the Steam Deck really stands apart from every other small factor handheld PC. It's the only one, as of yet, that is equipped with a powerful AMD APU combining a Zen 2 CPU with a RDNA2 GPU. This is the same GPU architecture that is inside the PS5 and the Xbox Series X and S. That isn't to say that it will compete with those not so portable consoles. The Steam Deck has 8 compute units, while the Xbox Series S ships with 20, so expectations need to be set accordingly, but it should be more than enough for a screen that's 1200 by 800. Additionally, the Steam Deck will come with 16 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM at 5,500 MTs a second, over a 30-bit quad channel, which should be perfect for most modern games for a while. The 40 watt hour battery is large too, but overall battery life will obviously depend on how demanding the game is you're playing. The 60 hertz limit of the screen should give you an indication of what frame rates to aim for with this form factor, and some early gaming benchmarks drive that home. These benchmarks come from a user in China who managed to get their hands on a Steam Deck early, so it's entirely possible that these results might not represent the final performance values when the Steam Deck launches this month.
the most important facet of a Steam Deck is compatibility with your entire Steam library, something which Valve can't really confirm just yet. In fact, five of the top 10 played games on Steam right now won't work with the Steam Deck running Steam OS, given the Linux operating system that underpins it. The Proton layer that can run native Windows apps can do some incredible things without much of a performance hit, but the largest issue is anti-cheat software that so many multiplayer games utilize. Valve is working hard with the Proton team and each respective software provider to resolve this, but for now, games like Battlefield 2042, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and more are a no-go. Recently, Epic Games did make a change for games that use Easy Anti-Cheat, a software solution it owns, making Linux support possible without requiring Epic Online services. Some multiplayer games such as Warhammer Vermintide 2 and Dead by Daylight should therefore work on the Steam Deck along with many others. There are numerous other anti-cheat solutions out there that are integrated into many popular multiplayer titles, so it rests with their respective developers to find a way to support SteamOS natively. Valve is trying to make the entire process of determining if a game is compatible easier with an official list of games that the company has tested on the Steam Deck. The list is a work in progress and doesn't come close to covering all of Steam, but it's going to be a list that grows over time and likely much faster once more people get their hands on the Steam Deck. By the time you get a Steam Deck, compatibility might not even be an issue at all, especially if you haven't secured a pre-order yet. Those lucky enough to have snagged some of the first units to go on sale should be getting notified to complete their order on February 25th, but any new orders won't be shipped until much later in 2022 if this year at all. Valve is using a queue system that puts the newest orders right at the back for shipping, so it might be worth waiting for reviews to see how things shake out if you haven't put money down yet. Additionally, Valve is only shipping Steam Decks to a limited number of regions with no plans to offer them outside of Steam currently. That means no Steam Deck on Amazon, Best Buy, or any other retailer for now. The Steam Deck drops this month and we'll be covering its launch as soon as we get our hands on one. Still not sure if the Steam Deck is right for you? Well, check out this breakout from the GameSpot After Dark podcast where that very topic is discussed. The full episode will be linked in the description. Make sure to like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe to GameSpot for more on Steam Deck. I'm looking at I'm looking, the more I look at it, the more I'm like, I want to I want to try this thing. I want to see Yeah, uh, that's yeah. the thing. I want to try I see it. How, like I'm Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking it, at like, the Steam Deck website, and like I'm looking at the specs too, like the, uh, the like 16 gigabytes of RAM, uh, and then like the RDNA 2. Uh, like it's 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 not the most powerful thing, obviously, but it's powerful enough to run games at 1080p.